Live from Nice, France, it's theCUBE. Covering .next Conference 2017 Europe. Brought to you by Nutanix. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman and we're here at the Nutanix European Conference .next. And being in Europe, one of the hot topics of conversation leading up to May 2018 is of course GDPR. So happy to welcome to the program two, two guests that are here talking about this. Famke Krummuller and Nina Fasalif. Thank you so much for joining Thank us you. today. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Famke, we'll start with you. You're a partner with OpenCitus. Uh, tell us a little bit about your background and, and what your organization does. Sure. So Open Cities is a consultancy. We work together with companies and businesses, helping them to understand the impact of policy and politics on their business, um, especially European politics and um, national politics of countries in Europe. Uh, we're based in Paris, and um, I'm here to talk about GDPR. All right, and, and uh, Nina, you're, you're, you're a security and GDPR consultant. Tell us a little, little bit about your background also. Well, I used to work for Volkswagen Group France as CTO and then as CISO, and then um, I was asked to work basically on GDPR and security as a consultant because many companies want to be compliant by the due date of May 25th next year, and uh, many companies are having a hard time, so I'm doing business analysis, audits, and creating roadmaps for GDPR. Yeah. Uh, th that's great. Yeah, Fanka, th th you know, th there's been many times when kind of policy and, and technology come together, but you know, GDPR feels like kind of this this growing buzz. Uh, those that's been around the industry, it was like I've heard people. It's it's the new Y2K. Um, it's you know this impending uh, thing. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty, it seems, for something that has, right. you know, there's a big legal document uh, on it. Uh, give us where people are, how are right. they feeling, how are you helping people right. uh, go with it when there is, you know, so much uncertainty there. Yeah, you know? so, I mean, first of all, it's very interesting to know that a lot of companies, even in Europe, but e also outside of Europe, who will be concerned by GDPR are not even aware of the fact that this regulation exists and that they are concerned and they need to comply. And then the other half, roughly, um, it's unclear whether they will be able to comply by the deadline um, in May ne of next year because it's a huge burden on the majority of the companies. They really have to review all of their processes, um, maybe do something new, get outside expertise on how to do so. so. And if they don't, they actually face huge fines from the European Union, um, which is obviously a way to try and incentivize these companies to do all that hard work to be able to comply. Yeah, uh, Nina, as if uh, IT organizations didn't have enough challenges to work with, it's like security is keeping most people uh, pretty pretty busy this day. So, you know, where does GDPR fit into the discussion? How do they, you know, bring it up? Where in kind of the the, the, the organization does it usually bubble up? And in which teams, you know, need to kind of address this? Well, GDPR actually concerns everyone, yeah. so really concerns the business, but IT has a big role to play in the sense that, for example, uh, many companies don't know what applications they're running. <laughs> so I've seen three companies and they might be running, let's say they say, okay, we're running on the cloud 40 applications, but when they start looking at it with uh, shadow IT, they might be running the triple. So it's, it's actually good because it's forcing best practice, it's forcing inventories, audits, and it's cutting costs at the same time. Yeah, um, I, I, I moderated a customer panel uh, to, towards the beginning of the week here, and you know there, there was one in a research organization, they're like, look, we've anonymized all our data, I think we're pretty good. One that was like, well, I'm doing a lot of cloud stuff, you know, Amazon will take care of this for me, or something like this. Um, but if you ask all of them, are you ready? Most of them kind of said, yeah, we think we're ready. Mm -hmm. what, what are you finding? Are most companies really ready? <laughs> yeah. I'd say most are not. Yeah. Um, I find that in the UK, uh, they're really, they've understood most companies that they really need to be thinking about it, the big companies. Some of the small companies are just waking up. In the US, they're really thinking about it too, how it's going to touch them, because all services and goods concerning European citizens um, are concerned. So companies are really, and executives are waking up. And for France, for example, uh, I'd say about a third of the companies realize it's going to really hit them, and there's many others that are not ready at all. Yeah, yeah. Y you mentioned Famke that you know half of all companies barely heard about this, a and absolutely, most companies today are global. You know, even if you're you know so, so, some local place, you have mm -hmm. you have customers and everything. So, what, what's the step beyond? 
becoming aware, you know, where, 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 where do people need to go? Right. I mean, there's several things they should be doing when they start to realize that they are actually concerned by this regulation. But one of the most important things is to just educate yourself about it. What do I need to do? Do relevant people within the company know that we need to respond to this? Um, are they aware that something needs to be done quickly and then conduct internal information audit like what data do we hold why do we hold it um, do we really need it what are our processes and then maybe appoint a data protection officer somebody who is on the inside of the company and will have the legal responsibility to inform them about how to be able to comply with GDPR things like these I think are the most important things to do in the very beginning yeah. Uh, Nina, I, I've heard the most from companies that handle data protection, you know, IBM, Veritas, Veeam, uh, all, all ones that I, I've heard kind of a, a strong push from them. Um, did, you know, is it, you know, a company like Nutanix, how do they, do they fit into the picture? Is it just something that they're part of the landscape and they're trying to help, you know, be good, good citizens to make sure their customers are aware, you know, what, 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 from a technology standpoint? From my perspective, it concerns every technological company that's running a service concerning European citizens. So of course it concerns Nutanix. Yeah. And yesterday we had a really great session for executives to explain, and quite a few of them were actually saying, hey, I didn't know GDPR really concerns me. <laughs> and so it's good that Nutanix realized they, need, they also need to wake up. Right. And I mean, it does even concern companies who are not based in the EU, right. but simply by, this, by the fact of holding data that concerns EU residents, they need to comply. And that's something which is obviously extremely important because it affects companies globally, even though they might think we're not based in the EU, we don't have any headquarters in the EU, we're totally not concerned. Well, yes, they are as soon as they hold EU residence data. Yeah, well, the, the, the clock's been ticking. I mean, it's, <laughs> uh, it was only towards the beginning of this year that I, you know, kind of first right. heard about GDPR. I've done a number of mm -hmm. interviews and talked talk to many companies. Um, any chance it's going to get delayed or, you know, or are the lawsuits just going to start once we hit the <laughs> 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 Well, I guess the, the authorities who will be responsible for, for overseeing where their companies are compliant, if there is a data breach or something like this happens, I think they will really look at the processes that companies have put into place. And if there is a good amount of goodwill and work has been done um, and it's a, it's a minor breach to a certain extent, they will probably be lenient in the very beginning because they know what burden it is on companies to comply. On the other hand, obviously they need to also set a precedent and show that they're actually serious about you know, enforcing this regulation. Um, so depending on what company they have, you know, if the Amazons and the Facebooks don't comply, that will be a huge problem. If a small business doesn't comply, that's maybe a little bit different. Yeah, um, yeah just, just following up on that, um, yeah, boy, okay, companies have so many different challenges that they, they need to work through. Um, any kind of first steps that they need to make sure that they're, they're, they're doing to kind of meet uh, with what is expected? Well, I'd say just for them to be compliant to start with is to find out what they're really running on systems and on the cloud, uh, applications, to do inventories, to do business assessments, to see what risk is involved around it. And I find that um, most companies that are starting to wake up, the first thing they do is they realize they don't know what they're running. So operations has a lot of work to do <laughs> and the security staff. Yeah. The, the other question I have is, you know, we spent, the, the last few years, a lot of companies are getting excited about what they can do with information. Is this going to be now a headwind that's going to stop companies and say, wait, hold on, maybe I shouldn't be holding on to everything, and, or is it, is it just having kind of the right governments in place to make sure I have protections for personal information as opposed to more anonymized information? I would think that it's the governance. It will make a big difference in many companies for the governance of IT. It might change the roles of CIOs and operations staff. I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think companies will have to reevaluate what kind of data do they hold and for what purpose. And ultimately, GDPR actually really introduces this principle of you need to have, first of all, consent to hold the data, and then second, it needs to be data that you really need for your operations and to deliver the service or whatever you're delivering. Um, so if there is no good reason for you to hold certain data, then you're actually, strictly speaking, not even allowed to do so. So I th that should probably change a little bit how companies view the type of data that they hold and for how long. 
Yeah, and I've even heard, we, we, we talked about some of the global impact because even if this is the EU, but it affects people that work there, but other governments are looking uh, and might copy that uh, if this becomes kind of the, the, the template true. to go forward. Mm -hmm. Right, and, and we've seen already, um, I think South Africa, Singapore have have published papers that are relatively similar. Um, and it does make sense, it's, it's a very, this regulation was negotiated for four years in the EU, so it took some time to agree. Um, and if it's globally applicable and if it sets extremely strict and high standards, it makes sense that it's being copied. All right, uh, I want to give you both uh, the, the final word as to kind of takeaways uh, for, for, for this topic. Well, I'd say if anybody's thinking about GDPR, I know there are 99 articles, but most in most companies, like 30 to 40 really concern the company. Not to be scared, you need to start from something and just to see what really concerns you. And I think the most important thing to know is that there are many legal and IT experts out there who really know this topic, which is very technical extremely well, so it's probably a good idea to get outside uh, outside consultants look at your processes and how you should go about yeah, things. Well, well. Nina and Famka, I think that's part of the reason that Nutanix brought you in is to <laughs> uh, you know, uh, socialize uh, some of their customers and even some of their executives uh, with the expertise that you bring. So thank you so much for sharing thank with you. our audience. We'll be back with more coverage here, getting towards the end of two days of live coverage from Nutanix.next in East France. I'm Stu Miniman, and you're watching theCUBE. <laughs>